Well, good afternoon. This is Dean Tenney. I'm coming to you from my studio here in fabulous Las Vegas. Uh, what we've been doing is uh, carving out some of the options strategies from the narrative lectures. That's what I've uh, kind of put on my list of things to add to the channel. So you don't have to go through the timestamps and or watch the whole narrative lecture. You can, you know, pick whatever you're looking. I'm trying to keep these down to you know, uh, bite more bite-sized chunks than my typical hour-long lecture. So uh, one of the strategies you're held accountable for on Series 7 is a protective call. What we're trying to do here is distinguish between a speculative long call where, you know, I'm bullish and I have unlimited gain, unlimited loss. No, that's a speculative long, but here we're buying a put to protect a short stock position. So if you see here, the example I'm going to show you today is we're going to short stock at 182. And if we just did that, we would have unlimited risk. If we're going to put in a ceiling, you know, options are about floors and ceilings. You know, the floor is zero. I'm hoping the stock goes to zero. But, you know, uh, you know, the hedge is about what if I'm wrong? It goes the opposite direction. And the opposite direction, I'm fearful, is the stock goes up. So it'd be nice if I had a choice to buy back the borrowed stock at a set price, in this case, 185 at any time between now and expiration. So that's kind of a bueno, and that's the position I'm gonna be showing you today that you're held accountable for a protective call. All right, so a uh, short stock plus a long call position. And remember when you're long this call, when you're long the call, what you have is a choice. Some people like to use, right? I like to use the word choice. It doesn't matter because that's language that you have to bring to the intellectual party. They're not going to say on the test that your customer has a choice or has a uh, right. You're going to have to do that based on the word hit long or buyer or hold or whatever the case may be. Uh, you have a choice to buy the stock at the strike price. So that, you know, the contract specifications don't change. And, you know, the reason you have that choice is you paid the premium, right? I mean, you want to have a choice. You're going to pay the premium. And over here, we've shorted the stock. You know, I have a whole lecture on shorting stock, bearish transactions. You know, and if that's all you did, you would have unlimited risk. But the short stock position is what's dominating the position. So whenever you have stock plus options, you got to stay really focused on the stock. So when you're doing questions that says shares, you got to stop and say, oh, shares, this is a uh, option position. This is not a stock position. Now, what you always want to do when you are combining stock with options is have an option contract that lets you offset whatever the stock position is. Offset means, you know, if I sold the stock here, I want to be able to buy the stock. That alone is going to get you a 50-50, right? Because you have two types of contracts, calls and puts. You can either buy them or sell them. And so we only have two option positions where you would be offsetting buying back the borrowed stock. One would be the one I'm showing you right now a protective call. And the other one would be silly, which would be a shorter put because, you know, obligations don't protect you. You would still be exposed to unlimited loss potential. All right. So let's uh, look at our position here. Now, uh, there's a lot of ways to do options. Again, I personally, in terms of my uh, process, I always want to get an option leg. I always like to put underneath it, what am I looking at? And what I'm looking at here is a choice to buy the stock at the strike price. That's what I'm looking at. I'm doing construction. Construction costs uh, money. And so I'm establishing the choice to buy the stock at the strike price. I'm putting in a ceiling here. I think of options being all about floors and ceilings. Now, again, you're going to be offered as a choice for a break even 185 plus six, 191, and that would be incorrect. Because if we said what you've got to be able to recognize when you get stock plus options, you got to, when you're reading the question, say, oh, okay, I got 100 shares of Zoom here, a short stock position, and 100 shares of Zoom. And that's what we mean by the stock dominates. All right, so uh, again, you can memorize the break-evens if you like. I think that's a lot of work. I personally think it's easier just to track money. Now, I like to use dollars out versus dollars in, but some people like to use cash out. Some people like to use debit to signify money out. 
Some people like to use a minus sign. I like to use dollars out versus dollars in. Some people like to instead of dollars in, use cash, credit, plus sign, you know, whatever floats your boat. So I'm gonna start by plugging in the dominant thing, the thing that I'm really doing here, which is shorting the Zoom stock at 182. You know, I'm hoping to sell high and buy back low, right? Do an opening sale on the Zoom at 182. And again, if that's all I did, ladies and gentlemen, if that's all I did, I would have unlimited loss potential because at some point I have to give back the borrowed stock. And so, you know, being the smart person I am, I say, you know what, I'm going to be a smart bear. I think I'll take uh, six points here and establish the choice to buy back the borrowed stock at a set price anytime between now and some future date. Now, again, if you want to, if you want to, you can memorize break-evens. But I, as I always say, once you go down the memory road, then you're gonna have to you know, memorize lots of stuff. What, what I like to do, you know, so here's would be 182. That's what I'm bringing in and I paid out uh, six and that's gonna equal my break-even. And I'm terrible at arithmetic, so uh, I'm gonna take 182. And that that was six, I get my break even of 176. So it's the short stock minus the premium. Now, again, the reason I like to just do the T as my setup is because if I do that, I can just shop my answer set. And I know that I'm looking for an answer that if I plug it in there, would make the uh, columns bounce because that's what break even is. Break even is same dollars out as dollars in. So I would just shop the answer set. And I say, okay, well, you know, I got to pay for the cost of the protection here. So if I, uh, if the uh, Zoom stock goes down to 176, you know, at that point I have uh, covered my break even, you know, same dollars out as dollars in. You don't know, nobody does anything to break even, by the way. So I wouldn't get too hung up on that. People won't do things to break even. I'm just illustrating that indeed uh, that is the break even. You got to overcome the uh, price of the protection is the point. Whoop. All right, I paid uh, paid out 182 and I brought in 182. I'm just illustrating that indeed 176 is the break even. Oh, by the way, this is the one time and the on one time only you have a call and you're subtracting to get the break even. And you're subtracting to get that break even because this is not an option position. This is a stock position. And again, we're not doing this because of the max gain. I mean, the max gain is when the stock goes to zero. And you know, whoop, uh, if your stock goes to zero, I think you're kind of a jerk of a customer if you say, well, Dean, you know, I wasted my money for the protection. Had I just uh, not uh, bought the call, I would have made 182. I said, well, yeah, but the, you know, the protection isn't about what if we're right. And I said, yeah, you're right. You didn't need the insurance. You didn't file a claim. And so, yeah, you, indeed, you wasted the premium. And so, you know, if we net those two, that's not why you're doing this, but if we net those two, please note your max gain is again, the break-even of 176. So if you want to memorize break-evens, you could just memorize again. If you go down the memory road, you can just, you know, you gotta start memorizing must, more stuff, but it'd be the break-even, uh, 176, and the stock goes all the way to zero. Because remember, you're bare and you want the stock to go down. So I'm just illustrating, whoop. Let me get a better looking. That's that, the one I make of money is when it goes all the way to zero. Yeah. By the way, that's less than had you not bought the call. Had you not bought the call, you would have made 182. And again, I wouldn't worry too much about that as series seven test takers, because you know it's not really about max gain. The hedging is about what if you're wrong. So this is what this is really about in terms of a test issue. In terms of a test issue, this is what it's all about.
right? Now you have a ceiling. And that's why you do this. The reason you do this is because now if you're wrong and the stock moves against you and starts going up, anytime you want, you can exercise your call contract and buy back the borrowed Zoom at 185. So the main point here, the main point, let's get a different color here, in terms of suitability, is what we've done is we've changed the short stock position to limited risk. And that's kind of cool. Without this hedge, it has unlimited risk. That's the main point. Now, if we net those two numbers, if we net those two numbers, you'll see that my maximum loss is 191, 182. You know, I'm a big fan of T's. If you get good at a T and you can track money in and out, then that whatever they want to know, you've got the answer. You know, you just, you know, you got contract specifications. So, you know, maybe you're not there, but if you can get there, that would be great. Anyways, I'm just going to net those two numbers now and say, okay, the worst case, I'm going to pay 191 out. The six points I paid for the protection, I exercise the call to go home. I say, I'm out of here. I exercise that 185. Uh, so I end up paying 191 out. I brought in 182 for the short sale. And so when it's all said and done and I net offset, I have lost nine points. And that's the neat thing. My maximum loss here, let me get it red here, is nine points. Now think about that, ladies and gentlemen. So again, if you want to go down the memory road, the memory road is you can say, well, another way to think about that is the worst case is my break even, which was 176 to the strike price again, where I can exercise, which in this case is 185. And that's just another way of getting that max loss. I personally think, whoop, to strike price. I just don't like the way that looks on my slides. I'm gonna fix that. Uh, another way to get there is to say the worst case is break even to the strike price. I used a uh, arrow last time and I used XP for strike price, but let's just do it, spell it out. So basically what we're saying here is the worst case scenario is I net my break even 176. I was net in 176 and the most I'm paying out is 185. And that's another way. Let me get my arrow again. That's another way of saying that's my max loss. And I wouldn't get too, hum, too hung up on the numbers here as much as I would just know there's a ceiling here at uh, 185. Again, I keep forgetting to tell you that uh, you can stop <laughs> and try and do the Ds. Uh, I'm doing these carve outs, trying to keep it under 15 minutes, but uh, let me know next time I do them, I can add you know a bunch of these. I don't want to cloud up the, the, the playlist with a bunch of individual uh, practice questions, but I can certainly tag on a couple at the end that you can try and put the answer set into the uh, description box for you. Okay, so let's clean that up. Let's clean this up. Uh, uh, which of the following would change a short stock position from unlimited risk to limited risk or provide the most protection. Well, when you hear the word protection on series seven, you know it's a long option position when it says protection, particularly most protection. I mean, when you short the option, you get some protection. We call that a partial hedge, you get kind of works. But you know, full protection and effective hedge is the way we say that in the business. An effective hedge is to have a choice. So when you see the word protection, you can think, okay, I gotta go long. So it's either A or C. And then again, I got to be do, able to do the offset. And so the answer is A. This is the most important answer set. Anytime I get an opportunity to show you this answer set, I show it all the time. There's like, 
I doubt there's any option lecture that you will watch on the channel where at some point you don't encounter this answer set. And what I'm hoping, ladies and gentlemen, is at some point you're not fumbling around that a long call is a choice to buy the stock. A short call is an obligation to sell the stock. A long put, people get hung up on the puts a little more, but a long put is a choice to sell the stock and a short put is an obligation to buy. The other ways you could attack this is to say, well, if I'm short, uh, the offsets to buy, so it's either got to be A or D, because those are the two that I end up buying. This was the whole point of this, uh, these carve outs as it relates to stock plus options. The only two stock positions you can have is a long stock position or a short stock position. And then we said you're going to get the A, B, C, D answer set based on either being long or short the stock. And so in earlier carve outs, I might I'll come up with a better name for what, what these should be called. I don't know, you know, 15 minute you know, non-narrative lectures, examples. If you have any ideas for a better word than a carve out, you know, let, let me know. But anyways, uh, if we're long the stock, I showed this earlier to you, that means we're bullish. And again, the offset to buying the stock is to sell the stock. So I'm either going for protection, going to buy a put, or for income, I'm going to do a covered call. And so I already showed you a protective put in an earlier example, and I showed you a covered call. In fact, let's just put that there. Uh, of all these, by the way, the covered call is the one you get the most of. Those are the ones you're going to get the most of. So of these, you know, ones we're looking at, that's the one that's most. Now, today what I'm showing you, today what I'm showing you is our other stock position. And our other stock position is a short stock position. And if I've shorted the stock, the offset is to be able to buy the stock. So I'm either going to, for protection, go long a call, or for income, I'm going to sell a put. That would be silly, because if you sell the put, you're going to have unlimited loss potential. And we said the stock position always dominates. And so if you're short the stock, you're a bear, but if you wanna be a smart bear and not a dumb bear, you'd be a behoove you to buy protection. If you buy that call, you'll no longer be subject to unlimited risk. That's what's bueno, that's the whole point. Uh, and that's the main test point is that if you are short the stock and you have a call, you're no longer exposed to unlimited risk. And then we said this one movie would just be silly because you know selling a put and having an obligation doesn't work in terms of a hedge. It might work in terms of income, but it certainly doesn't work in terms of a hedge. All right, so it looks like I'm going to hit my goal of getting keeping this at about 15 minutes on these things. So um, I don't know if I'm going to show you the short stock uh, sell a put example because I just don't think it's the right answer or anything. Uh, like, share, subscribe. If you're in your Series 7, I'm assuming that you earlier took your SIE and if you know anybody who's behind you in their testing journey, please tell them about the channel. Uh, about half the channel is Series 7. And, um, you know, I'd like to get people earlier <laughs> you know, on the channel earlier as they begin their SIE, that first leg of the journey. So if you're here in Series 7 land and uh, you're, they're back at SIE, tell them about the channel. They don't already know about it. I appreciate your, your viewership. We are uh, just past our one-year anniversary. Uh, been pretty exciting. I didn't have uh, much expectations when I started the channel a year ago, but we're over 200,000 views and 3,000 subscribers. And so, uh, you know, uh, it's been quite quite a blessing. Uh, remember, on the next leg of your journey after you pass your seven, then the next leg of your journey is 66, perhaps 65. And uh, we have stuff for you on that as well. I'll continue to be adding to the channel at all times. I apologize for you know, sending out too much stuff too quickly over the holidays, but it gives me a time to uh, put some content on the channel before my 2022 uh, teaching schedule interferes with that. So uh, I will see you next time. Um, who knows what our next lecture will be. We'll figure out something.